everyone i'm with baseball you know what i'm not gonna say legend just one of the greats of baseball when we talk about teaching the game playing the right way playing hard ron washington how you doing sir i'm doing very well all right ron so i gotta ask you growing up who was your favorite baseball player or players i was a giant fan so it was willie mccovey willie mays those type of guys uh um what's his name uh the toy cannon in houston yes because i'm being from new orleans uh-huh we got a lot of Houston. It was a Houston 40, what was it? 45. 45 yeah. then. Yeah. And so I used to sit on my daddy, my daddy laps and watch that. But I was a Willie Mays, Willie McCovey type fan. Okay, so you know, you've been around this game for a while. And can you just think of like teammates that you've had that, you know, may be underrated as far as the value of them being a teammate to you and being great towards you? Well, the main guy was uh, Kirby Puckett, yes. uh, Gary Ward. Yes. Um, he was a heck of a teacher. Um, when I got to the big leagues, he had already been there a year, but uh, he acted like he'd been there 25 years. Um, those type of guys, Dusty Baker, Reggie Smith, Davey Lopes, those are the guys I came through the game with. And those were the guys that demanded that you treated the game with respect. And because they demanded that you treated the game with respect, everyone that was under me when I was coming up, I demanded that they treated the game with respect, hoping that whomever they run into, they have them to treat the game with respect and it just keep going around. You, you know, I'll, you have to be a giver. And um, I was fortunate enough to be in this game and been able to give. Well, you, sp you spoke about Dusty Baker just now and obviously that means you, you become a manager and you know, you're teaching guys along the way. You know, coming to the Rangers at that time, did you see the, the World Series as, as admirations for the team or did you just say, hey man, let's see how this goes, but that team just bloomed rather quickly. Well, the thing happened like this. Uh, the first meeting I had with all the scouts in the front office, we met over at the Hilton right there mm -hmm. on Lamar. Mm -hmm. And um, I, John Daniels and I actually decided to talk about a World Series. And we had a fake ring. And I know at the time, I was a novice. I hadn't even managed a game at the major league level, but I still knew a lot about the game of baseball. I talked to the guys then and told them about the fact that that's our goal is to win a World Series. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time that they thought I was out of my mind. Yeah. But being out of your mind and having a mindset is totally different things. Yes. My mindset was about one thing, being successful. And being successful, playing the game the way the game is supposed to be played. Yes. Being able to do everything that the game asks of you and, and not be selfish. And I was fortunate enough to get a group that uh, they followed my lead and they went out there between those lines and I think they brought a lot of joy to the Texas Ranger fans. Yeah, so I watch your drills all the time and how you work with these players, and I want to know, like, was that something that you just created? Was it someone that, you know, you saw doing it and you did your own variation? What did you think about that? Well, my mentor was Chico Fernandez with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He did a lot of close-up stuff. The knee drills, I started that. You know, you have to try to do things to keep interest. I started the knee drill. And from the knee drill, it, it worked to, to, to create angles with your hands. Mm -hmm. And when you create angles with your hands, you try to create those same angles with your feet. Mm -hmm. So if the hands and the feet are in sync, you're going to be consistent catching the ball. And it just developed, just developed. And then I went to the fungo. I'm not the first one to invent the pad, mm -hmm. but I use the pad diligently. And I'm not the first one to invent the small glove, mm -hmm. but I use the small glove diligently. And there's always a purpose. Yes. And from the first time I became an infield instructor, I set out the purpose to everyone that ever did my drills what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. And it just grew. And uh, that's what you have to do. You have to keep trying things. you got to keep getting interest. I'm real good with the fungo, so I was able to start using the fungo. And I started using the fungo at a distance. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it, yeah. it, it created something. And uh, that's where it comes from. All right, last question. I'm going to have some fun with this. And so you're managing this team. You gotta put it, you gotta put it together an infield. All the players all time. From first to third and your catcher. I won't let you do pitcher, but we'll we'll do catcher. If you wanna put your starting pitcher there, that's fine. I need your infield. All time. It could be any player for any well, gen all generations, everywhere. Well, third base is tough yeah. because I had a six time gold glover and then I had a Adrian Beltre. 
So if I could say Agent Trevaz, yes. that would incorporate Eric Chavez yes. and Agent Beltre. I like that. Okay. At shortstop, if I can incorporate uh, Andrews Holland, that's okay. Andrews and, and Miguel, Miguel Tejada. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like At that. second base, is I, I can incorporate uh, Ellis Oz. Ellis Oz. Mm -hmm. That would include Mark Ellis. Mm -hmm. And and Ozzy Alves. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and at first base, um, it would have to be um, uh, Jason Jason Munn. That would include Jason Giambi and Freddie Freeman. I like that. You see what I'm saying? I like that. I like because, that. Because you know Jason Giambi was a guy that had problems with his throwing, mm -hmm. but he worked diligently on his throwing. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, if you hit a ball at him and you threw a ball in the dirt, it. it was caught. And, um, and you said eliminate the catchers? No, you got a catcher. Go ahead, catch and pitch. Ramon Hernandez. Okay. Ramon Hernandez was young when I was in Oakland, but he got that pitching staff of uh, Hudson Molden Zito. Yes. He caught those guys. And he caught those guys when they was at their maximum, and he got the maximum out of them, you know? Outfield, I'll have to say starting center field, Kirby Puckett. Love it. Left field would be Gary Ward. And I have to put Josh Hamilton in there somewhere. So, I mean, he's a center fielder, left fielder, but I have to put him in right field. Okay. And your pitcher? And a pitcher would probably be um, Kobe Lewis. I like and I that. say Kobe Lewis because I remember one time I walked out the dugout. Mm -hmm. We was getting beat eight to nothing. Mm -hmm. It was in the third inning. Mm -hmm. And before I got up to the mound, Kobe, Kobe said, you got a quick hook today, huh, Skip? I said, Kobe, they didn't put eight runs on the board. <laughs> he said, I'm going to keep this ball. And when I came and got the ball from Kobe that game, mm -hmm. it was in the seventh inning. And wow. guess what? We had an eight to seven lead. Wow. wow. He said he was going to give the bullpen a day off. I remember that so vividly. And he had a rough couple of innings, yes. but he stayed up in there because his mind was team. Mm -hmm. He was going to save that bullpen, and we ended up winning that game. Wow. Well, everyone, like I said, you guys know how I feel about this about this man. He is the biggest inspiration of my life. But, Ron, I want to tell you this. Thank you for what you have done for the game of baseball. Not only just being African-American, just watching what you have done for us and paved the way. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, the only mindset I ever have is giving. Yeah. People gave it to me. Everything you see of me, about me, and what I do, I learn from people. I didn't get all of this on my own. Yeah, I experienced a lot. But keep the game moving you have to take what you got give it to someone else and yes. hope they give it to someone else yeah. and hope they give it to someone else and hope they give it to someone else you see where i'm going yes yes that's how it it's happens a cycle of life there that's you go. how it happens i appreciate you Ron. thank you thank so much you.